Peter Charles here of Hooked Fly Fly Fishing, and let's talk about mending. Uh, and I know this is not uh, casting, but this is more about efficient fishing versus efficient casting. But when you think of it, the mend is the extension to the cast. And so if you've put out a good cast, you're in a position to make a good mend. Uh, and the purpose for mending is to control the presentation of the fly to the fish, both in terms of speed, orientation, and depth. Now, I'm talking about swinging flies for steelhead, but it could be for Atlantic salmon, Pacific salmon, smallmouth bass, any fish that will take a swung fly, we can use these techniques for. And I'm going to be talking about two of them. I'm going to be talking about the pullback mend and the cross current mend, and they two do two different jobs. So I've got my model here, and we've made our cast, and we've cast uh, about 45 degrees across the current. And then when we do a pullback mend, what we do is we just lift our rod over to put the line as close to parallel to the current as we possibly can. So there's our current direction right there. And what we're doing is that we're exposing the minimum amount of line to the current, and this will keep the fly line running straight, and it will keep the fly oriented it like this. So as the fly swings, it will orient nose up, nose into the current, and it will look like it's a bait fish having trouble keeping its position in the current. And because we're minimizing the tension and the minimizing the swing speed, the fly will run lower. And so as the fly begins to swing, we track with the rod tip all the way across, and that puts us in that position where now the fly is like this on the dangle, ready to go. And, you know, we'll often get a hit there. But the thing is the flies come across low and slow, pointing upstream. And the whole thing about this is minimizing tension, minimizing swing speed. And part of that whole process is the tracking of the line with the rod tip as we come through. So we make that pullback mend, and then we track with the rod tip as we come back down around. So that's the pullback mend uh, done, you know, with constant tension. And I have not thrown a pile of line in like this to make uh, to make the uh, pullback mend. And I've seen pros do that, and I had a client do that. And what was happening to him was he would throw this big mend in the whole load of flack, slack line. And when his fly got to where I wanted it to start fishing, because two currents came together, it's a good place for a fish to hold, his fly was completely out of position. And so after we finished uh, working the run, I went out, I wanted to see what his fly looked like. And what it actually looked like was like this, like a, uh, an umbrella that's been turned inside out. And it was dropping like this. When it was out was uh, when it was under ten not under tension so i mean no fish is going to take that it looks like debris as it's floating down through and is dropping uh it, it it was hopeless so when his fly was going through the zone which i wanted him to fish that's what it looked like so when we're making these men's and i know there's pros that throw a lot of slack in order to sink the fly i get that and you might want to do it under certain circumstances but the reality is it's not a good idea for most fishing situations in a regular run where we're just trying to run our fly down through and control the speed and control the attitude because your fly will look awful during that dead drift period unless you've deliberately set up a dead drift with a, a, a nymph style fly, you know, like my little brown thing. That looks okay when dead drifted, but most flies, spay flies look horrible when dead drifted. So avoid that big, bulgy, sort of slack line cast. Yeah, it sinks the fly, but you do realize as soon as it comes under tension, your fly will begin to rise again. You know, it may have dropped, but as soon as it's under tension, it comes back up. It's got to go back to a certain level, dictated by the swing speed and the current speed. And so whether you sink it a lot at the beginning, it will have a tendency to rise, unless you're designing flies like my downforce flies that do tend to stay down more. But apart from that, most most high drag flies will come back up as soon as the tension comes under onto them again. 
So avoid that throwing line into the water unless there is a you're just aiming for a specific spot and you want the fly as deep as possible when it reaches there. Other than that, it's probably not a good idea. Okay, the other one I'm going to show you is the cross current mend. And I use this a lot early season when I want the fly high and fast when the current, uh, sorry, the water temperature is ideal and uh, fish are active and moving. So uh, what happens in that case, instead of the fly being, you know, nose into the current like this, the fly comes across more in this fashion. And it comes across faster and it comes across higher and it only flips into this position when it gets onto the dangle. So what I do is I've made my cast and then I make a big mend like this. And what that does, the current then pushes on the line and we get something that looks like this. So your, your floater section is bellied and your sink tip is almost parallel with the current. It's almost in that position like that. And what you may find is you'll get a bend right here at the sink tip, where the sink tip joint is. And so your, where your floater is pointing, your floater belly is pointing, and where the fly actually is, is two very different things. You know, I mean, your fly is over here somewhere like that. And so, you know, if you're going to snag up, you're snagging up over here, but your line is pointing here. So that's how that setup looks. And don't worry, you will get fish. They'll hook up. You won't have any problems with that because they tend to take this very aggressively. Uh, and they'll come up and they'll actually, what's interesting is they will take it going downstream like this. So they'll, they'll be lying upstream and they'll come up, swing around and take it going downstream. I've noticed when I, I tracked my hookups with my Weimer pattern, they always hooked up on the wrong side of the mouth because they were hit it going downstream. They hit it hard. So you don't have to worry about the hookups. So that's the cross current uh, mend. Uh, what you can also do um, when you're getting onto the dangle, if you've got a current seam here like this, you can move your uh, dangle by moving your rod tip over across the current, back across the current like this, you can leave it in the seam, which helps to avoid snagging up on the dangle. Because if you've got frog water here, you don't want your, you know, your fly to end up in the frog water, you'll end up uh, snagging up. So this works for either cross current uh, mend or the pullback mend. Always be aware that you, you're not limited by sitting with your rod pointing straight downstream. You can move it back up to position it in a, a current stream, a current seam like this. And what I'll often do is I'll just move my rod tip backwards and forwards like that, which causes the fly to follow it. And I'm working the seam backwards and forwards in case a fish has followed the fly over. So that's a little thing you can do when you're getting close to the dangle and you've got a seam in front of you that you want to work. So I've got some footage here. We're going to see the uh, pullback mend and the cross current mend uh, used. So here I'm going to be using the pullback mend first. I make my cast, immediately make a mend, and I can make a mend with running line. Uh, you don't have to worry about having a lot of running line out. And you'll notice how I'm tracking with the rod tip, coming across slowly, letting go, following the speed. And uh, now different camera, same cast. You see the mend going over. And now I'm tracking and my rod tip comes into view and the fly is pointing upstream, going slow and deeper. And you can measure this, you'll get hang-ups uh, when you're doing this, but when you do the, uh, the cross-current cast, you don't get the hang-up. It shows you how deep you're going. So this is the cross-current uh, man, same cast, but now I'll just stop it there for a moment. You notice how big an arc I uh, brought my rod. I'm th deliberately throwing a massive belly into that line, and then I'll bring my rod back to the dangle position. So I'll go past the dangle position first and then come back to the dangle position. And that's how I get as much of a belly in the line as I, as I can, can, because I want to expose all that belly of the line to the current to bring that fly across high and fast. And now I'm just gonna let it sit there and I'm just gonna let the line straighten out and the fly come up on the dangle. And one of the things you're gonna get as it comes across your fly, there's my fly, here it is. I'll stop it right there. 
your fly is coming across in this position. And then as it gets close to the dangle, it flips around and points upstream. And that flipping around can often trigger a strike. So that be prepared that when you're coming off, there are two points uh, in this cast where you get that turning of the corner. One is at the point at the top of the fly. When it lands, it's landed a diagonal like this. And as you make that mend, it can actually be drifting downstream and then it will start to go across like this. And then as it makes that turn at the, at the beginning of the cast, of the, after you've made the cross current mend, you can also get hits there too. So whenever the fly changes uh, its direction, either go from upstream to across or from across back to upstream, those two corners, be prepared. You can pick up fish on there. Okay, here we're back, same cast, now the same end, and you can see how far my rod tip went across and then I brought it back. And then I'll just let it sit. And as I say, if I wanted to work that current seam on the right, I would bring my rod tip back over into that current seam. So, as I said here, mending is about managing tension and swing speed to control the presentation of the fly. So, if you are uh, trying to slow a fly down, sink it, make it point upstream, it's the pullback mend. If you want it high, fast, broadside, it's the cross current mend. You also have the option not to mend at all. All right, well, let's face it, you don't have to mend. You can just simply cast your fly out and then let it come across. Yeah, you could do that too. Uh, you could do little variations and cast out, then don't change your rod position and then start changing your rod position. So you changing the speed and the attitude of the fly as it swings. You might do that if you've got varying current speeds. So you, where you've got fast current, you might want to try to slow it down. And then when you've got slow current, you want to try and speed it up. So use your imagination. You're not limited just by those two, two mends. You have other options. Do nothing. Do only part of it. You know, mend only for part of it. Don't over mend is the other thing I want to say is I, I see people doing a mix master, you know, there's very seldom any reason to do that. Uh, in fact, what I find that if you're doing a lot of that kind of mending, it means you're fishing in some awkward currents and you should really be using a full sinking line that negates that problem. So uh, if you're using a typical sink tip system and you're doing a lot of trying to keep the thing straight, I'll switch to an intermediate shooting head instead. <laughs> Save yourself a lot of bother. Anyway, so that's mending. Uh, and as I say, don't mend automatically. Think about what you're doing. Think about the presentation, what you want the fly to do, and then mend accordingly. Cheers. Mm -hmm.